Abbott Laboratories in Chicago. From this pharmaceutical center to Abbott Laboratories in Tennessee, a teletype message ordering shipment to the cancer hospital of a leading Midwestern university, a required amount of radioactive gold in solution for treatment of a patient suffering from cancer of the lung. Here at the pharmaceutical company's Oak Ridge installation, first step is to check through the card file to make sure the hospital has authorization from the Atomic Energy Commission to receive radioactive materials, knows how to handle them. It does. And before long, a truck is backing up to the Oak Ridge National Laboratory to take on, in a 100-pound lead-lined container, a mere sliver of gold that's been exposed to the atomic pile. Working with mirrors and tongs, the technicians stay well away from irradiated materials to avoid the deep, crippling burns of nuclear energy. A rapidly clicking Geiger counter shows how hot the shipment is. Much safer when enclosed in lead, the minute quantity of gold foil must now be rushed to its destination at the greatest possible speed. For with gold, the loss of radioactivity is very rapid. Its period of effectiveness is less than three days. And much remains to be done to the metal before it's ready to be injected into that patient back in Illinois. Its exact strength is determined. Then the gold is dissolved, sterilized, made pyrogen-free, and otherwise prepared for medical use, all by remote control from behind lead shields. The processed isotope is again packed in lead, speeded on its way. Mere hours later, by special arrangement, in this case with Delta Airlines, the precious package is in the city where its contents are to be put to use, either in studying the functions of human organs, in diagnosing disease, or in combating a known ailment. Here at the hospital, the gold colloid will now be transferred to a container from which it can be administered to the patient. Isotopes are used in fighting diseases, like cancer, where cell tissue must be destroyed. The thyroid gland in the neck, for example, picks up most of the iodine introduced into the bloodstream. So in cases of thyroid cancer, they inject radioactive iodine, which has the effect of installing billions of minute x-rays into the cancerous area where they can kill overactive cells without affecting healthy tissue nearby. Here, though, as we've said, it's radioactive gold, best for alleviating cancer of the chest. For the injection, the isotope will be further diluted in a saline solution in special equipment that's had to be developed. Our pharmaceutical houses, working hand in glove with the medical profession, remain constantly on top of new developments in science, industry, or government, ready to convert potential lifesavers into realities. And here's the man whose urgent requirements touched off the chain of events we've just seen enacted. Is he a bank president, a tailor, or a man on relief? Under our setup, it doesn't make a bit of difference. No matter who the patient might be, the same amount of gold would have been used, the plane would have flown just as fast, the dozens of technicians would have performed their roles just as carefully. The isotope may not save his life, it's no panacea, but it'll almost certainly prolong it and make it more comfortable. And you can be sure the men who brought this measure of relief are working day and night without let up to find the final answer.